Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe, which, as you know, we're playing Goring right now, and we're still trying to beat the crap out of the Russians, but it is what it is, but we gotta talk about Performance Enhancing Drug Program Begins. The first deployment of the Staatsplan 15.24 began today at a classified location with the men of the elite Fallschirmjäger. The program consists of a number of serial injections of highly classified uh, pharmaceuticals containing multiple types of hormones such as um, steroids. The men will be observed over the next week to ensure that they are coping with the administration of the <clears throat> pharmaceuticals, before the next batch of soldiers undergo the same process, of course. Already in performance tests, the dope soldiers are being, running faster and lasting longer than the control group. Some members of the army have expressed their doubts about the program, setting health risks to the soldiers. Our big man and leader, uh, Herman Daddy, has continued to ignore these complaints and order the program to continue, of course. The German Grenadier will be able to take on any amount of subhuman soldiers single-handedly with these new stimulants. And ama every grenadier. In order to restore the image of a proper grenadier division, we must see to that our tanks shall be fitted with a proper armor from now on. While the grenadiers may prove to be great propaganda tools in the eyes of Germany, our efforts will be in vain if they are without proper equipment. To the factories, of course. To the factories. And uh, what about water? Of course, I read this one last time too, but. So after this one and political interference, for too long, the cretinous and selfish bureaucrats within the party have poisoned the Reich from within. Meanwhile, the ingenious officers of the army plan together to save the nation from destruction. No longer shall we be disrupted by the fools in government. The Wehrmacht will be granted absolute independence from the influence of all departments in the Reich, answering only to the Feldmarschall and, of course, our big Hermann, naturally. Uh, which one do we want to do next? I don't want to do whatever doesn't cost us extra money, which I still am not taking the march to MEFO, so... Because I don't want to just continue to just, just destroy what we have here. Oh, you know what? We probably still need to do this. And... Succeeded. We can't do that one yet, so we're going to threaten the Japanese eventually. Uh, we're still doing this one right now. Two days left, which is not bad. Let's continue on with this one right here. And then eventually we'll be able to get to uh, the end of the Rus, which will be fan flippin tastic. Hope you guys are having a pretty good day. We have an ice pilot promoted. Let's continue with that. And we're going to talk more about naval stuff. 70% poverty rate. Uh, though That's just a lie. Match them. Another unfortunate roadblock has gotten into the way of our great plans for naval dominance. Size, though money is being poured into the Kriegsmarine at an astonishing rate, the fact remains that we're playing far uh, from behind here. Our Adolf, glorious as he was, made a serious error in ignoring the Kriegsmarine, and now our navy is seriously outnumbered by both the Americans and Japanese, who have spent much of the last 20 years building their fleets to enormous sizes. By now, it's taken an incredible amount of resources to be able to catch up in numbers. However, where we lack in numbers, we shall excel in strength and skill. Each of our ships must be perfect killing machines, crewed only by the best and brightest. While they flounder about with mediocre designs and average crews, guide a hand to the restoration, pair with their own stellar crews, will shatter them. As the average Panther was equivalent to 10 T-34s, so too will our ships be equivalent to 100 of theirs. Cruiser for cruiser. Uh, though the attention of both the media and the government may be focused on our capital ships, the humble contribution of the simple cruiser cannot be understated. Without them, our battleships would be sitting ducks for flanking attacks from nimble, agile ships. The perfect blend of firepower, agility, and speed of the cruiser's impact on naval warfare cannot be possibly overstated. Therefore, we must ensure to make to not overlook the importance of these humble machines, even as we focus on the showstoppers. Our cruisers will get the attention and love that they deserve, and they shall be crewed by some of our finest crews and captains. Although capital ships may be those that carry us to victory when the time comes, It'll be undoubtedly be with the help of the cruiser in warding off danger of the flanking force that success is guaranteed. Side effects. Doctors observing the Staatsplan 15.24 deployment are deplo reporting a number of side effects both physical and mental in soldiers undergoing the experimental treatment. Test subjects are reporting withdrawal-like symptoms when the drug injections are delayed. Others are becoming violent and irrational with at least two soldiers forcibly removed from the program for treatment at a nearby asylum. The Great German Reich Council on Scientific Innovation has advised that the program be halted immediately, citing the risk to German soldiers. While a smaller group of researchers believe that if the program is not terminated, a more stable version of the drugs could be found and implemented. Uh, the Fuhrer is attending an emergency meeting with the GRWI, which is a, after which a decision will be handed down. Cover these accidents up and keep going. Terminate the program, it's not worth the risk. Um, I kind of want to do this one. I think I, I normally do this one. Kinda wanna, I don't think there's any good things that come from this. Rapidly worse than terminate the program, it's not worth the risks. Um... Perfection. Uh, pipes. Huh? Uh. You know what? This is one I probably wouldn't use, so we're gonna do this one. It's not worth the risk. The German soldier cell. So. Uh, let's finish off, but what about the water? There's actually quite a few days left. That's actually quite a few. 22 days, my goodness. 
and of course perfection, we've furthered the cause of science. Yes, we have. The GRWI scientific recommendations have served to assist the Gross Dumanches Reich in achieving considerable scientific progress. As our survey suggests and will continue to suggest unless the Board of Statistics wishes to bring a corporate lawsuit on their collective heads, our decisions have been made the public far stronger and the Aryan man even more Aryan as a result of our experimentation. Our researchers report a 15% increase in the luminosity of smiles received by the general public. Needless to say, the Reich's future is bright. We have achieved complete and utter perfection. Oh, yes, please. As, of course, like, even though I, between this episode and the last, I wanted to take out Russia, and we're still, we're still taking them out. It's just taking much longer than I had hoped. So, and we do have a lot of allies here trying to help us out, too, but it's starting into March, and, uh, yeah, slowly grinding through everybody, or at least the Siberian Federation, to make sure that we can actually do well here. Uh, how many losses are we at? 42,000 versus over half a million, which is not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Advanced ship torpedoes, let them do their thing. Uh, oh, chemicals in the water, you can't be serious about this. Osenberg slammed the report down on Goring's desk. The big daddy himself looked particularly unimpressed with the show. Putting drugs in the water? Are you kidding? The people will go mad and not because of the drugs will come for your head. Hey, Osenberg, please remember that this is a military idea. I simply see potential in it. You know as well as I that these drugs work wonders on our soldiers, Goring began, his voice remaining steady. Osenberg cut him off, forcibly raising his voice. Giving a couple soldiers injections of drugs and pouring drugs into the water supply are completely different things, Herman. Christ, aren't you dumb enough to really think this will have an effect? Are you? By now, Osenberg was yelling and anger flashed across the Fuhrer's face as he motioned for silence. You don't understand, Werner. This is a military idea. Now, we could use it to help pacify the Eastern Reich's commissariats as a series. We could also use this in the military areas, urban, industrial areas, perhaps to help with productivity. Maybe get the army to help with that, of course. If this happened to leak to the press, it would be a total disaster for Schorner and his men, and we should take every step we can to prevent that. Are you following me? Osenberg stared incredulously at his friend in the subtle rift that had grown between the two cracked open a little wider. Herman, do you even believe what you're saying yourself? I'm not asking for your opinion on me. I'm asking for your opinion on this. Pass by the east or uh, increase production, Herman responded. The two men stared at each other down before Osenberg replied. Focus on the rocks comes threats. Cause a scandal. Hmm. Now we can focus on RK. It's a bigger, stronger, better panzer. Uh, the Panzerkampfwagen is the backbone of the military, or the Blitzkrieg tactic, a machine so powerful that we cannot afford a so-called phasing out of its valuable arm. It must be remarkably expensive to draw down usage of the machine. A truth we have chosen to downplay for the papers, rather, the fear goring, has decreed that we shall develop a, and we quote, bigger, better, stronger panzer that shall be deployed in future conflicts. Thus, the time has come to once again innovate the ancient Aryan steel superweapon. From the German action of the panzer, German steel is shattered and shall shatter all arrayed against it. A slight increase. Osenberg entered the office with his face drawn and a single piece of paper in his hands. Unusual for him. Goring was poring over a document of his own, pen in hand, also unusual. The two regarded each other with a hint of contempt before Osenberg began. After the resistance reports from the Ukraine, mein Fuhrer, Osenberg stated, his voice cool and collected. Goring looked up and met Osenberg's eyes, the two staring each other down. There was a slight increase in partisan attacks in the last weeks. <coughs> the words hung in the air like a vulture as Goring looked away from Osenberg and out the window. There was a silence between the two, something becoming all too common these days. Finally, Goring spoke up, still facing the window. Is there a correlation between the drugs and the attacks? Osenberg rolled his eyes. No, it's within the normal ups and downs of attacks. The issue is that the numbers haven't dropped. There's been no effect. We've spent millions on this for no reason, and now we just look like fools. I've heard some words from the military about our spending habits. The military is worried about our spending. Can you believe it? Goring waited a moment to respond. Can you remind them that this whole operation was their idea, he replied. In any case, stop the project. We'll refocus elsewhere. Yes, my sure, we all make mistakes. So we complete perfection no matter what, so. Cool. Yeah, it happens. You know, we all make mistakes. But happy April, everybody. <clears throat> I just can't wait for this Russian war to be over. Like, come on. It's lasting so long. I mean, Russia's a gigantic place, but still. Just gigantic. And, uh, we can do that one, but we'll do this one next. A bigger, better, stronger panzer. Like we just read. German Leviathans, we read last time too. Uh, and political interference for too long. The Cretinous, I think it is earlier too. The Cretinous and selfish bureaucrats of the party have poisoned the right from within. Meanwhile, the ingenious officers of the Wehrmacht plan together to save the nation from destruction no longer. Shall we be disrupted by the fools in government? The Wehrmacht will be granted absolute independence from the influence of all the departments of the Reich and answering only to the Feldmarschall and the Fuhrer, of course. Um, duck and cover. The insidious powers that stand against us would like nothing more than to destroy the, our very way of life and future. Thus, every school in the Reich is instructed to hold multiple duck and cover drills every year. Even our youth will then know how to protect itself from the evil attempts by the Reich's enemies to destroy us with their nuclear arsenals. 
And then we're gonna go with uh, the Panzers next. Or no, I a newer motor. First thing any good tank needs is an engine. Simple enough, right? Maybe not. As it turns out, the largest tank engines we have for the Miles and T Tiger II are not nearly strong enough to power on the scale of the Leaguer. Osnberg won't be able to get the darn thing to be able to move an inch unless significant resources are brought to bear to develop a state-of-the-art motor. Of course, that will significantly increase the production cost per unit, and with all the other expenditures that we will need to be added to the project, this could well start right out of the gate as a massive bon boondoggle. So maybe we could work with the old designs a bit, make them a bit more compatible, just enough so that the behemoth can head into the battle, and then hope for the best. The Liger starts development. Lead engineer wavered as he watched the two most important men in German science go through his te team's design. Their eyes did not meet his and said, glued to the blueprint laid out on the table, tracing the lines and numbers that made up the tank. Osenberg's eyes shot to the name, the Leaguer. Um, in the opinion of our scientists, this is the ideal tank, mind you, brilliant agility. Great speed and firepower to destroy anything the Americans and Japanese can muster. If the project goes ahead, I can guarantee that this will only bolster our armies. The scientist stuttered. Gordon did not address these remarks and said, turning to Osenberg, who had still not moved. Hey, Osenberg, what do you make of this design? Goring asked. It's terrible, Osenberg grunted. What about it? Goring replied. Crap, Herman, look at this stupid thing. Two guns, the terrible armor, the weight, it's big as, big as, it's as big as a tiger and half as useful. There's nothing good about it. The scientist began to defend himself, but Goring cut him off with a wave of his hand. No, no, Werner, I don't think you see the potential here. It's a blueprint, a prototype, isn't it? Goring kept going before the man could answer. Sure, there are flaws, but I see a lot of potential in this. Could you imagine the American reaction to getting run over by twin gun heavy tanks at 70 kilometers per hour? He turned to the engineer, addressing him directly for the first time this meeting. Tell your men to get to work on this leaguer. I'm confident in your success. The heck counts on it. Even as the engineer stammered out, sure, yes, my fear, a faint groan of displeasure left Osenberg's lips. The future is now. The engine question. The door swung open as the engineer walked into Osenberg's office, a stack of papers filling his hands. When Osenberg just formed to set the papers down, he unceremoniously dropped them onto his desk. Bernard sat and ran his head through his hair, hand through his hair. He could swear it was already thinning even faster from all this. Is there a problem, he asked. Our efforts to improve upon the, <clears throat> the original leaker design have hit a small snag. We've improved upon the engine, it's got a lot more power, more speed, and we can push the tank a lot uh, quicker at a fa faster pace. So what's the catch, Osenberg asked. He had a feeling this could go to a yes, but we want to hear from the man himself. He produced this new engine. Uh, we need more time and money if you refuse. We will do what we can to streamline the production of the old engine, but the speed of the tank may be a bit less. Osenberg said, I can already see it now, the leaker, an expensive money sink, a complete waste of time, and catch all the blame for it. No matter that he was against the project from the start, Goring sure as hell would make him fall for it. Uh, take the fall for him. For him, these two were, of course, perhaps the fundamental issues of the leaguer. Could be fixed or at least mitigated for with enough money and development. Who knows, perhaps it could become a thing simply workable. Asking for more time and more money would be a pain, but if it saved the project, maybe it was worth it. Osenberg turned back to the man, his mind made up. Even as he spoke, he could tell that this man, or this would not be the last time a request of this nature would be made. I'll get you to the fun and get to work. Just do it if you can with the old one, will you? Russian gas goes down less speed. No. We must have the best. And there's 5% military concern, but that's not bad. Overall. Ein Hatter Pazarum? The Lakers arm will need to be top notch given how large of a target it will be. Everything from handheld anti tank munitions to artillery and bombers will be coming after it in an attempt to remove our queen from the board. Heck, they might even try using naval guns if they had a chance. Given all that we're going to be putting into this project, we can't have the units crumbling under heavy fire. They ought to be able to withstand the fury of hell, according to Fear Goring, and he wants no expense spared for developing new polymers and composite materials in pursuit of this. Yeah, Osenberg has just been given quite the task, but maybe, just for the sake of efficiency, he could uh, just cut a few corners here and there. Well, we'll see. Oh, uh, I did advance jet fighters, huh? Well then. A. There you go. I'm a stalker, a cannon. Uh, as befitting the new benchmark in military technology, the Leaguer must have an armament capable of destroying any target it comes into, into contact in the open battlefield. In order to maximize its destructive potential, therefore, the engineers have devised the most peculiar solution, installing two 105mm guns at the front of the behemoth's chassis, of course. This firepower comes at the cost of the ability to rotate the cannons via traditional turret, giving the Leaguer more in common with the tank destroyer than a main battle tank in some respects. This offers is of little consequence, as we only need one shot in order to make a kill. No adjusting for aim will be necessary once the first shots have been fired. The only question left for Herr Osenberg is how much he should expend in the design of the guns themselves. The armor question. The engineer was back in Osenberg's office, uh, carrying another <coughs> load of papers. Osenberg, uh, currently in the middle of the second drink of the day, regarded him with an icy stare before setting the glass aside. What is it now? Osenberg grunted. 
We got another sticking point here, Osenberg. We took your armor complaints into consideration and have developed a new armor composition to better protect our tanks. With this new armor, we believe that many of your concerns will be alleviated. The engineer spoke in a calm, rehearsed manner. Osenberg couldn't tell. Um, if you had been practicing a spiel or if you just always sounded like that. Engineers do tend to sound a bit robotic, he thought. And let me guess, Osenberg slid further back in his chair. It'll cost money and time to actually make this new armor, and I'll need to go beg the Fuhrer for a, new, a few more Reichsmarks. The engineer stammered his flow interrupted. Uh, yeah, something like that. If you don't give us a funding, we'll do what we can with what we have but the armor. <clears throat> the armor might be less functional, yes, yes, I can guess that. Osenberg groaned. You know, I wanted to wonder how this could be the ultimate tank design. If it needs so many reworks. You signed off on it, sir. Osenberg didn't bother to try and explain the whole fiasco. Alright, get to work on the new armor. 40%. Ooh. The gun question. Osenberg tossed the paper the engineer handed him back onto the desk. He downed the rest of his whiskey glass before continuing. Lord knows he needed it. So, now there's an issue with the guns, hmm? What else could be wrong with this whole damn thing? He spat venom at the engineer. His eyes were now as wide as dinner plates. Well, the guns are functional enough as is, the engineer stuttered. Not used to seeing this normality, or normally placid, Osenberg is angry. Then what are you doing here, Osenberg roared. He crumpled the report and threw it in the engineer, watching as it harmlessly flew over the man's head. What I, what I wanted to say, Herr Osenberg, is that the guns are unable to penetrate the heavy sinks that our enemies wield. If we were to upgrade them, they would be a match for anything the Americans or Japanese have. The engineer spoke rapidly, trying to defuse the situation, and it worked. Osenberg took a deep breath and sat back down. Ah, uh, sorry about all that. Got a little carried away. Anyway, you want more funding for new guns, Osenberg said, his voice a little strained. Yes, Herr Osenberg, of course. We can use the old ones. They function well enough. And it wouldn't cost any money or time to keep them, but these new guns could help push the leaguer into greatness. Osenberg held, his, held it in his lap. He already knew he lost his temper once. Now is not the time to make himself seem like a lunatic. Besides, perhaps new guns would make the leaguer a functioning machine. He thought about it for a moment before responding. Ah, oh, fine. Are we missing something? The Panzerkampfwagen main battle tank, a proven project, has thankfully come to its completion, having run its course smoothly and without difficulty, however. This has caused worry among a few military circles, who doubt the project's seeming success, yet despite our misgivings, it's best we don't inform the Fuhrer and Schoen about it, as we're quite sure that there's totally nothing wrong with the Panzer. We'll take the additional measures of making our designers sign non-disclosure agreements for the good of the Reich to prevent morale loss from any potential leakers. That's for the best, really. As we need to consider, uh, clamp down on military concern, but it's only 5%, that's not very much. Economy is not looking... Eh. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, the Lager's first test. So, uh, this is the Lager I've been told about. Uh, yes, my fear. Goring examined the machine as if it were an actual wild beast, his eyes flicking between the hull of the crew and the 205mm cannons attached to the front. His gaze lingered on the guns for lo the longest, as if he could already imagine the cannons obliterating American tanks. The three men crewing the prototype watched closely as the Fuhrer continued to zoop around the tank, taking every last bit. Finally, motioned to his aide in the party, the officials departed for a nearby hill, from which they would observe the tests in a moment. The tank revved its engine and sped down the course, Goring watching intensely, gazing through the pair of binoculars he'd been provided with. Occasionally, he'd make a side comment to one of the engineers, praising the speed of the tanker, commenting on its majestic appearance, however. As the test went on, the praise began to fade. The Liger, despite its beginning appearance, seemed to struggle as the test continued. The tank was only able to compete its shooting at a pace that barely trailed the le Leopard, despite the twin gun's supposed strength. The engine which once launched the Liger on the trials in a flash began to pour black smoke, and a final coup de gras. The Liger turned to fire upon its own final targets, only for the first gun to be blown out of its mounting, flipping backwards and tearing through the roof of the tank before slamming it into a halt in the mud. The assuming explosion obliterated the crew cabin and all unlucky men inside. The en lead engineer instinctively looked over the fear's reaction. Goring's eyes, now ice cold, seemed to look straight through the man. Without a word, he and his entourage departed, leaving the engineers to pick up the pieces of the project, both figuratively and literally. At least it was a prototype. So that could have gone better. Skip the next test, huh? Oh crap, I've completed the focus, that's Liger. Oh. Fear Goring has officially decreed the most recent main battle tank project design shall be classified as Das Liga Panzer. With this declaration, those who manufacture Panzerkampfwagen have since become emboldened and encouraged in their work, thereby increasing the development and research capacity for future designs. The next fat sacks of research money and grant funding are well on the way, and given the efficiency of the German scientific machine, we're certain uh, that this will not incentivize corruption or budgetary blow in any way utterly foolproof. Decrease military's influence. Change some names. Decrease military power. Get Spidel involved. Decrease military's power and influence. Raymer? Let's continue it, huh? Quick me, I told you it wouldn't work, Herman. I stupidly told you and you, you ignored me. 
Osmer took another sip of his drink before sitting it down. The Fuhrer himself sat behind his desk, reading another report. Uh, refusing to look into Osmer's eyes, this is a disaster. The tank is terrible. I saw Vanna, but now is not the time to lay blame. We need solutions. We need them fast. Timmon responded. And so was calmer than Osmer, though I thought it would be. His tone only frustrated Osmer more. Did he not understand what this meant? Easy for you to say. This is my butt we're talking about here, Hamim. Osmer flashed. I finished off his drink in one large swig. Everyone said nothing and sat staring off into space. For a moment, Osenberg thought he might have died then and there after an uncomfortable pause. Everyone ga gazed into Osenberg and began to speak. Look, Vanna. His old take was built off Schwannes and Raymer's idea. Osenberg scoffed. Of course, Simon would blame someone else for this. Goring's eyes steeled, and Osenberg shut himself up. Now listen to me. We shall leave her off to the public in a parade soon. We'll get Schwann and Raymer to give speeches. We tie them to the project. Then, when it comes out the leaders of mess, we point to them. They had the idea they wanted the tank. They look like fools. We get out unscathed. Everyone wins. Is that all right? There's another silence. Osenberg hid his surprise under a layer of discontent. He didn't think. Goring had it in him to think that quickly. Yes, I can work with that. But you better remember this when they come up with another genius idea, him, and I'll see you soon. With that, Osenberg grabbed his coat and left the office, his mind a sea of anger and frustration. Nobody needs to know. Match them. Yes, we're missing something. A gosh darn functioning tank. We will recover from this mess as quickly as possible. So now we gotta finish this dust leak here. Yes. And increase corruption as well. As we're still trying to find Russia, which is taking god awfully long. Got no trick seven percent. But that, I'm not super concerned about that. After this war, we'll definitely make sure that we've got enough materials for everything here. Happy June! Let's see how this Leaguer story ends. Oh, okay, so another Kriegsmarine thing is actually functioning. There are 260 ships in her fleet, and this many ships in almost 800 in American uh, fleet or navy. Japanese have almost 600. We need 598 to match Americans. We have the smallest navy. Yeah, well, we're working on it. We've been working on it the entire campaign, so. The Mokta. Nice. So, do you already have five? Yeah, we got more than enough carriers now. We definitely need um, more cruisers. Because these uh, cruiser hulls, they're pretty good. Oh, we have another rear module here, too. Look at that. So, we have custom guns, we've got torpedo launchers, we've got more naval guns. Module. Rapid power. Light battery threes. Wait, light, light batteries. Why do we have light batteries? Hey, let's, we don't want to destroy stuff here. Anti sub rocket launchers, huh? That's actually really cool. Yeah, discharge fours. Um, engines. This would slow us down, but actually gives more reliability and costs way less, which is actually kind of cool. Um, anti-air, fire controls. Anti-ship missiles? I, oh, that's not a bad idea. Sub-detection goes up. Helicopter. Because we have anti-sub stuff, right? Yeah, anti-submarine rocket launchers. Okay, that charges, torpedo attacks. Could you get even more if we really wanted to? Rapid fire guns. Black cruiser batteries. And we have enough of that anti air. We're doing okay on anti air. Seven, ten, two and a half. There we go. There we go. That'll be good. Increase corruption a little bit more. That's ideal. Let 
the March of the Lake. And now I may introduce to you my esteemed superior and hero of all Germans, the Field Marshal Ferdinand Schoner. The crowd roared as Raymer welcomed Schoner to the stage, and Osenberg clapped with them his seat. A station just to the right of the podium gave a most stellar view of the Field Marshal's began. Outwardly, he kept a smile up as he pretended to listen to Schoner's words. Inwardly, however, his smile shot through and through with panic. The plan that he and Goring had hammered out seemed to be going accordingly so far, but so many things that could go wrong. If Shona found out, the result would be catastrophic. If the plan was leaked, it would prove a massive embarrassment to Goring's administration. Even if the plan worked went correctly, what if Shona and Raymond managed to pass the blame themselves? And eventually find its way back to the GRWI, not to, if not Olsenberg himself, and then you have to get uh, another mess to deal with. Besides, how much had he kept, how much had keeping the leaguer's poor performance secret from the military already cost the Reich? Bribing that many people paid a hefty price, and it was no guarantee that one hadn't snitched. Osenberg realized that the people around his chair were now looking at him, and he stamped out of his socks. The sound of applause and Schoen's voice mixed together, and Osenberg looked to see Schoen pointing to him, complimenting his work, he assumed. He quickly brought back his smile and waved to Schoen, and the two made eye contact, and for a moment, Osenberg thought he saw something more than just a standard contemporary, uh, complimentary glance in the field marshal's eyes. Perhaps he was just being paranoid, but it felt like Schoen knew. The plan goes ahead. Der Lager, huh? 125 armor. Well... The Leopards, what we're using right now. 66 production cost versus 227.4. 99 armor, 120 piercing. 125 armor, 176 piercing. 40% reliability, holy crap. 90% reliability and, and 2.6 fuel usage. Um, soft attack is 35, breakthrough is 39. Breakthrough is 131. Defense is god awful, 15, Jesus Christ. 15 defense. I guess 16 defense is not that much better. They actually get reconnaissance on the leopard. Max speed is 18 versus max speed of 15. Minor incremental improvements over this one. We're not going to use a leaguer. We just can't afford it, you know. We just can't afford it. Jim Armada. Cruiser for cruiser. Um, I think I read this one before. So if you read this one, please read ahead. Battleship for battleship. Our fatherland deserves a better navy, one fitted with a vast number of ships capable of delivering firepower against our enemies at sea and on land. What our fatherland needs is the creation of more battleships. For every one that our foe shall have, so, we, so shall we. If you're growing plan for the fatherland, it shall be instrumental to the fulfillment of this d desire. <clears throat> Once we've accomplished this, we'll have the power to bring our might against any state that dares oppose us. Carrier for carrier. The age of the carrier is just beginning. After years of dawdling, the Kriegsmarine Marine is finally through a Herculean effort caught up to the modern world. Our first carriers take their maiden voyages as we speak, and thousands of citizens watch as planes soar from their decks. However, through our efforts so far have been both taxing and expensive, we're still not equal with the Americas or Japanese. These two decadent states learn about the tactical importance of the carrier and how to use them when they are squared off against each other, leaving them both with an inherent advantage over us. We cannot let this stand. The finest captains of the crews shall soak up the knowledge of the new way to naval combat like sponges, and they shall become the greatest carrier crews in the world. Our enemies' laughs will ter quickly turn to screams when wave after wave of planes swoop down upon the pitiful fleets, devastating their navy and shattering their resolve. While we may never catch up numerically to the power of the Americans and Japanese, we'll certainly beat them in skill, and if the land wars we have fought over the last decades means anything on the way, skill is everything. Now, what else do we have here? Give Shoran to control of the GRWI, huh? Should be good. Heavy tanks, super heavy tanks, don't really need those. Armor fighting vehicles, don't really need those. Uh, it's 1972, let's come over here. Yes. The German Armada. Our Navy, once the laughing stock of the world, is not truly among the best of the best. Through a campaign of incredible renovations and rebuilding, backed by a mind-boggling amount of money, our Navy can now proudly compete in international wars against, or war, waters against the IJM and the USM. All across the Reich, crowds but watching sheer as the Kriegsmarine, which has festered and obscured and de de uh, decaying for so long, triumphantly returns to the ports across Europe, saying, Sanders flapping the wind. The journalists have made sure to get many pictures of the crowds, the ships, and most importantly, the Fuhrer himself, who watches the ship after ship sail by with a smile spread across his face. In Norfolk and Tokyo, the mood is much more somber. Indeed, one could even call it panic. There are intel reports that the decadent admirals of both America and Japan, which have rested safely on their laurels for so long, now scramble for answers and solutions to our newest weapons. They will find none. Our fleet is the greatest in the world, manned by the greatest crews in the world. We shall control every ocean from the Pacific to the Atlantic. The enemy will tremble when they speak of the Kriegsmarine, for they know that death and destruction is bearing down on them. Germany is the greatest on land, air, and sea. But we're going to continue to go with... Uh, uh, we don't need that one yet. Repair the Reich's defenses. While well, the Reich is littered with bunkers and underground installations from World War and the 50s, 
Many of them are either outdated or in varying states of decay or disrepair. If we want to sufficiently protect our people from nuclear attacks in the aftermath, then we have to restore and modernize as much of these legacies shelters as possible. Cool. 0.51, that's alright. We're definitely getting there. It just it takes time. We have a lot of events to read too, so. Um, oh, we're almost there. Oh, thank God. Jesus, that took forever. Almost there. So close. Ninety-nine percent of the way there. Oh my goodness. Better the devil you know. The conquest of Russia. The Russian bear lays crumpled to the ground. The German spear lay firmly in its throat. After a long uh, campaign through the remains of Russia proper, a fall out, possibly our biggest conquest yet has been achieved. From the streets of Moscow to the near infinite. Uh, stretches of snow in the Far East, the Swaska flies high. The German soldiers march through every city in their wake, with the looting of whatever is valuable already a daily norm now. Soon the treasures of Germania shall be filled with Russian gold and coin. Well, the Russians put up a good fight, their so-called All-Russian Congress. Their squabbling and inability to fight together properly would be the same. Apollo 6 needs a rope around it, lest they topple and separate once more. For the Russians, they never found that rope already. The new Rex Commissariats and Milita... Uh, uh, commandants are being prepared across the Russia's carcass. It may take in three wars for national socialism to finally triumph over the Russian realm, but at least hit, at last Hitler's dream has finally been achieved. The only hope is that the rest of his dream will follow suit now, too. I want you to go there and repair. My god. Third time's a charm. The Russia should be divided into more manageable administrations. Thank god. Did we lose uh, GDP here? 396. We probably do if the game's going to lag extremely hard and try to liberate these different countries. Yep, a lot of lag. We got a lot of power though. We need more uh, fuel. What else is new, you know? Okay, so this is taking forever now. Not bueno, not bueno. Restore the old fortifications? The Oswald, the Siegfried Line, air shelters, remnants of the Maginot Line, as well as various Czech, Austrian, Polish belt installations. The list of old bunkers and fortifications that doubt the landscape of the Reich is long, far longer than one expects it to be. The National Defense Committee has recently brought to attention the pitiful state of many of these buildings. As the Reich's defense network is vast, the funding needed to rebuild everything necessary to properly defend in case of a full invasion will be very expensive, and some of the committee have proposed a scaled-back version of either working on the air defenses, with some citing reasons that air power is vastly more important than ground forces, and with some arguing to restore the bunkers or torting. That a lack of defense in the case of the Reich's invasion will be leading to it quickly getting occupied. Alternatively, we could simply attempt to maintain the whole what's left, which may leave the committee disgruntled while the economy would be surely uh, practically unimpacted. Some limited repairs are sufficient. Get the bunkers back in shape. The air defense needs some work. Yeah, we'll do that one. That makes the most sense. But Moscow is looking better. We have Melita Valvaltum, Siberian. And they also have a stabilizing regime and then continued resistance, which is god awful. Raksum Sar Turkestan and Melita Valvaltum, Fun Ost, or Far East. Ooh, Waste of Siberia. Look at that. Tolsdorf. Mumert. But we've got bigger things to do now. Like go to Turkey as we will end the Rus as God has built it. Or Goring has built it, really. Five billion. Two twelve. Negative one point uh three. So this growth should actually help us out quite a bit. I'm excited for the growth. Nuclear battleships are nice. End of the Rus. Yes, please. Operation Gertrude. Uh, so we got all that stuff done, which is fantastic. Sure, why not? 75. Capacity multiplier. Operation Gertrude. Across months. I think I read this one before, so. Um, if you read this one, please go ahead. Finally, we finished it. So, economy wise, oh, look at that, 8 billion. We can invest it, but. Oh, look at that! We actually have a little bit of growth! Fantastic! I told you. I didn't actually tell you anything. Actually, I told you several things. Um, oh, so we don't have to do this anymore. Oh, that's so much better. Oh, thank God. 0%, 0%, 1%. Ah, uh, we're looking pretty good already, actually. Um, overall, with this goring plan, we're doing quite well for ourselves across mountains. Efficient uh, use of supplies. There is a persistent myth among our enemies that the Wehrmacht has always had chronic issues with maintaining a supply line. 
They point to Rommel's enthusiastic drive across North Africa against the British or the difficult conditions that are men facing the Russian winter. This is, of course, pure nonsense. Every soldier worth his salt recognizes the importance of logistics and proper use of available supplies. That said, the Caucasus Mountains are filled with extremely tight bottlenecks, and there are plenty of places where supplies might be misplaced or stolen by mountain dwelling partisans. It might be worth focusing our plans proper uh, maintenance of supply lines and maximizing on what. <clears throat> Uh, the use that our men get out of their supplies. They'll face harsh conditions, especially when the snow arrives. Best to avoid the typical fate of armies in that region, of course. Yes. Very good. Oh, we're down to 364. Well, we're looking better anyways. These are all ahead of time. Uh, I'd be good to do. Yes, please. So you guys are the ones I'm putting over here. You guys are hurt a little bit. And by hurting a little bit, I mean you're definitely hurting. Um, you're over there. Actually, I might just take... Well, you know what? You're not doing anything over here, so... Do that one. We need more cast, oh god. Definitely need more cast. I think we need more of everything. And we never have enough of anything. We're building more refineries, too. <clears throat> Charge over them. A morale boost the troops in the form of a perfect, and will help them charge across the mountains faster than ever. Questionable as it sounds, perhaps the best solution to the Caucasus Mountains is to just get the hard part over with and plow straight through them. Some of the generals balked at the suggestion from the more hardcore Shun rights, but the Pharaoh can't see the wisdom in the straightforward matter and approach. We know that no matter what we do, crossing the Caucasus will be a bloody affair. Maybe we should just bite the bullet and accept our casualty estimates as they are. When confronted with the possible damage to morale the troops might suffer, the same generals who suggested the strategy noted our massive reserves of Pervitin, a combat stimulant left over from the last war. Pervitin helped many pilots, tankists, and panzer grenadiers through the weeks of tough fighting, keeping them sharp and awake for days on end. Issued a mass, it might give our grenadiers a kick they need to face their coming challenge. Ooh. And can we decrease corruption? Yes. Very good, very good. And then what? We got all that naval stuff we gotta do, and we will do it, but fly over them. The easiest solution to the mountains? Just go right over. Why get the grenadiers bogged down in battles of attrition when we have the entire divisions of paratroopers standing, standing idle? It has been many years since the fall should make a call, but I fear I was pride and joy I saw real action. They are some of the toughest, hardest, and most elite troops in the world. They faced down tremendous odds in some of the harshest battles of the Second World War. And live to establish their legend. We have just the right targets in mind. Beyond the Caucasus, there are relatively flat areas in Armenian and along the coastline, where they could be dropped off in significant numbers along with enough supplies and heavy weapons to hold on until the rest of our forces push through the mountains. Operation Gertrude will not be another credit this time. Uh, the Foster Mago fly the flag proudly over the battlefield. Yeah, we're missing a lot of attack helicopters, even anti-air equipment, my goodness. Happy September, though, everybody. That's not good, not good. Um, not good. We have enough on the Leopard at... Uh, main battle tanks for now fly over them. Oh, crush the Turks. With all planning and preparation complete, we are now ready to initiate Operation Gertrude and destroy the perfidious Turks today. We strike a blow against this nation of step born savages on behalf of all of Europe. Only once the Swastika is raised or the Hagia Sophia will centuries of Turkish aggression and genocide be avenged. Despite the difficulty fight of that fight ahead, spirits are high, particularly among our Austrian troops who long to settle the historical rivalry with the Turks once and for all. Indeed, the entire operation has the atmosphere of a crusade, one for the modern era, declared in the, in the name of National Socialism and the defense of all of Europe. This is just in case. There you go. And... Just in case. Nice. We only need what? In the state, so... Millions upon millions of gallons of fuel. Just millions, a couple millions, that's all. Modify the officer core. But let's, let's go with that one. Well, I guess we'll see what happens.
Oh, you probably all want to stop training then. Well, you guys can train still, that's fine. You guys cannot though. You must be ready. I don't want you guys to... Eh, charging in might not be a bad idea, actually. They don't seem very strong over there, so... Nice. Stealth attack seems cool. Yeah, we should be able to punch holes through here eventually. And happy October! Nothing says October like more war. Still, we still have a little bit of growth. Fantastic. Never mind. Uh, and for the deficit, though. Crush the Turks. Oh, promise the Arabs. We promise the Arabs under Turkish control get re good rewards here they in our conquest. The Arabs chafe under the Turkish rule, as they did for centuries in the past. They represent the cosmopolitan degenerate Turks. See them as even worse than the European colonizers. Naturally, we can exploit this. During the Great War, the British were able to incite many of the Arabs to revolt against their oppressors, drawing upon a newfound sense of nationalism that the desert people have discovered, of course. The British and their French partners betrayed the Arabs, selling out their land to the colonial magnates and the Zionist interests. The Germans, stalwart and honest, will be true friends of the Arabs, should they accept our advances and fight alongside us, at least. I do anyways, I don't care. Mm hmm. Ah. Do Turkey. I wanna wait for Turkey. Clay Nazine. I think for these guys, nope, that's good. And we gotta call all of our allies into the war. Nice. Called in and fun jihad. Fun local Islamic groups rise up in jihad against the rulers. Islam began with the Arabs, though an alien religion and historically a threat to European civilization, it will be a useful tool uniting the Arabs who wish to overthrow the Turks. The common perception among Islamic hardliners is that the Turks are a decadent, idolatrous, and an irreligious race, unworthy to rule over the true believers. And true, they might regard our own nation as a land of heathen devilry, but they are also so distant and radical that they can never pose such, such a threat to a superpower like the Reich. Fighting radical militants who wish to see the end of the Turkish state and a return to tradition will serve us well, far removed from the borders of Germany. There'll never be a problem in the future. These pro groups are savage, bloodthirsty, and obsessively puritanical, imbuing with them a fighting spirit that compensates for their disadvantages against the Turks. With German guns and a bit of funding to establish larger forces, we'll have ourselves a tame monster unleashed upon the Turks at will. Autonomy for the Arabs. The Syrian Arabs have suffered immensely under the Turkish rule. Their proud traditions, inherited equally from Rome and the Arabian empires of old, have been crushed under the foppish butil of the steppe barbarians. The Turks seek to impose their mongrel language upon this noble people, throttling the life out of the culture, we as the defenders of Europe, and those foreign peoples with all ties of Europe, declare that the autonomy of the Syrians will be enshrined in our war goals for the Operation Gertrude. Of course, they will be a satellite of the Reich, just as that makes sense, but they will enjoy the same freedoms so generously granted the Slovaks decades ago. Soon, Arabs everywhere will look upon to the Reich as a great protector in the occupation of the Turks. Unlike us, the Turks are people of limited use and worth. Unwelcome in both Europe and Near East, ever since they swarmed out of Central Asia a thousand years ago, they are still little more than barbaric invaders. As such, Clan Azim will not be treated as a defeated nation, but as a militarized zone permanently occupied by our troops. Maintaining order will be difficult there, but the thorough beating should put an end to any ambitions of Turkish independence. We will reassert rightful European rule of the region in the true Roman fashion. The martial jackboots will echo through the mountain passes, and airborne patrols will ensure that forests and hills are clear of insurgents who would defy our legitimate authority. The Turks will face a harsh German occupation, and they should also help alleviate military pressure as well. That's nice. Can you not go? And we've already landed here technically, so. How are we doing on the other side? Oh! Oh, look at that. Syrian national state. Uh, Republic of South Lebanon, huh? Uh oh. They lost a couple convoys, which is good. And utterly gobsmacked. Love it. Oh, is that our. Oh, God, that's not good. 
Of course, then again, we haven't really been focusing on subjects very much, have we? ships in there and absolutely destroy them. Well, we lost a couple chippies. That sucks. Well, we sunk most of their fleet, so. Two thousand versus one hundred sixty-eight thousand is not enough, of course, but whatever. Jihad. I love Jihad. Oh, I thought it's separate or something. Nice. Just demolishing their divisions. I love it. All the way through. Mm, Russia, Turkey. Nothing too much important matter that's there. Clan Azin secure. As expected, the Turks were no match for Germanic might. With Syria engulfed in Arab uprisings, their paltry forces were unable to prevent the Wehrmacht from marching right over the border. We have reconquered Clan Azin for its rival European owners and now begin the process of restoring it to glory and prosperity. The Turkish problem will need to be addressed in time. Well, until then, we should focus our efforts on pacifying the countryside. Some humans rarely comprehend the fact of their defeat immediately, so there will need to be extensive and appropriately harsh measures taken to secure the region for the Reich. Glen Azin is ours. How goring? That'll be good. Good, good. It's all taken care of. All very well and good and taken care of. Well, I guess we'll continue with, uh... Modernized Siegfried Line. One especially large bunker complex left to in recent times with the fortresses of the Siegfried Line, but originally to ward off any potential French attacks on the heart of the Reich. Now the line can prove useful once again. With some engineering tricks, it can be refurbished to both protect the populations of Elsace, Baden, and Falls if a nuclear shelter is needed, but also serves as an additional safeguard against the Burgundians, of course. Burning out, doing a good job. Still positive with a slight deficit, but whatever. If you see them, I just want you to straight up just, just destroy them, so. Seems pretty good. Nice. Oh, okay, and political interference greatly increase the power. You know what? We can just continue the leaguer. Just because, eh, it's not a chip we're really going to be using. <coughs> Modern as a fear bunker. The fear bunker was a contingency bunker for the use by the fear himself. Here, the situation like ever becoming desperate enough. Thankfully, it's so far never been needed. This means, however, that the bunker is just outdated, as are less other likes of shelters. For a man of fear goring stature, such a meager housing of his course wholly insufficient. It's time for a modernization project. Absolutely. Good. Ah, uh, why not? Sure, why not? Do we actually have that many main battle tanks? We have 5,000 in a spare. Holy crap. Okay, well. We can lower it by 10 then, because we have more than enough right now. And we all know we need more stuff here. Uh oh, we have to lower it by 8. Take it to 2. Um, we can more jet cast, which is good. And more this and this. 100% more. And political interference. So good. 
There's a fear bunker. And ducking cover. Time atomic security. The nuclear missile silos are the heart piece of our nuclear strategy. However, in the past, uh, silos, staff, and commanders were a cauldron of spearites, bombonites, or even the SS. This is not a mistake the fear will repeat. Only the most loyal men handpicked by Gorian Shon of themselves shall oversee such a vital task. Ah! Did we get him? The conquest of Turkey. The Turkish wolves lay battered, bloody, and very much defeated. Under the glorious German eagle. <coughs> After a long and hard-fought campaign, the Wehrmacht has reached Istanbul and Ankara, replacing the Turkish crescent with a similar red flag, our much greater swastika. The Turkish government has signed unconditional surrender, giving us full reign of the country. <clears throat> While the Turks refuse to surrender themselves willingly, we still should admire their willingness to fight in their fervent anti-Italian aggression, which would be very useful for us in our coming battle in front of the Mediterranean. A new Turkish-oriented military government has been instated, covering the regions of Anatolia. Goring has also been playing with the idea of combining Greek lands in his administration to one experiment with the idea of heleno <clears throat> Well, the Turks will still resist the new regime. After only gaining their independence 50 odd years ago, they'll eventually submit just like the rest of our subjects. Hopefully one day the Turkish wolf will stand alongside the German eagle once more. Perhaps German medicine will heal the sick man. Hopefully. Ah. Beautiful. Ooh. Militev of Alten Pazin. Wolf Graf von Baudissen. Ah, Mazier. Very good. Syrian national state, huh? Invade Lebanon. Uh, yeah, you betcha. Actually, can we do more than just invade uh, the remnants? Syrian national state's gotta die. Uh, is anyone suffering from casualties here? Here, you guys go on. Beautiful. Happy December, everybody. <coughs> We've finally been able to conquer in this episode quite a bit. The rest of Russia, finally. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Turkey now. And yeah, we're, we're doing all right. We're still growing? We're still growing. Still building up those refineries in a, even a prison complex, too, huh? Modernization of the Fiat Bunker. Well, the Alba Spolman in charge of the Fierbunker, the facility has seen remarkably little change in his basic setup, with the past furniture and artwork hailing from when Adolf Hitler was still a Fuhrer remaining. Only minor renovations, too, uh, make the Fierbunker up to par with the rest of the world, requiring a refurbishment or refurbishing of the communications and electric network. Some new paint here, some modern telephones there. National Tour goes up, that's alright. It is worth it for him and Goring. New silos. While the current nuclear silos are sufficient in keeping up with the threat of MAD, they are still too concentrated in certain locations, and thus, we risk being wiped out in a decapitation strike before we can retaliate, thus building up new and more importantly spread out uh, silo solutions in all corners of vital defense of the Reich. Of course. Oh, we won. Uh, who owns this now? Uh, Arabin. Oh, von Schweren. Very nice. Guns. Factory Apple would be nice. Alright, so after that, then what? Influence the Arabs. The Arabs appear relatively content with the newfound autonomy, but their loyalty will always be in question. It's our shared history, not one of endless conflict and bloodshed. Perhaps a time will come we must bring them under direct rule from Germania. But for now, they aren't enough of a threat to bring our full might to bear on them. Instead, they just need some prodding in the right direction. A few carrots dangled before them with a stick kept out of their sight. We'll buy their oil, sell them goods at reasonable prices, and continue supplying their fledging armies with German equipment. <clears throat> if they should ever move in a direction disagreeable to us, it'll be a child's play to bring down the hammer on their ungrateful nation. Bolster our arms. Kleinazine is much larger than one would think, and the terrain has made our efforts to secure it more difficult than expected. That's of no great concern, but the faster we can subdue Turkish resistance, the faster we can be ex begin exploring the region's natural resources. To this end, our occupation forces need a large boost in terms of supplies and manpower. More divisions can be shipped across the Bosphorus as needed, but the nature of Klein Azin also necessitates the construction of better infrastructure. The Turks have done a poor job modernizing their nation in the past few decades. Railways, surface roads, airports, supply ports, and garrison compounds need to be built to a tighter grip on the region and show the Turks who rules them now. Increase the loyalty of the uh, militarists. 
pressure of the Iranians. Well, the Iraqis enjoyed historically good relations with Iran, but our conquest of Turkey has them on edge. Excellent. Though perhaps tenuously linked to the European Aryans through ancient blood ties, their people have no doubt been weakened by the years of miscegenation uh, uh, with Turks and Arabs. You must have no illusions about the unreliability and backwards nature. Still, their fear can be exploited. With the strength of the Wehrmacht on full display during Operation Gertrude, their meager military sh must be quivering in their collective boots. Trade delegates will be sent to re renegotiate existing deals and resource rights. The Reich needs their oil, and they are in no position to refuse us. Sure, why not? We'll do that too. Engineering, 80, 80. So quite a bit ahead of time. Um. Honestly, with it being like this, I want more fuel, because we, my god, do we need it, and I forgot about all this stuff, too. Oopsie. Look at all these countries still going to take out. Yay! Intimidate the Italians. As the hour of Italy's conquest approaches, we must be sure to engage them on multiple fronts, the better to stretch their armies thin. The Italian Middle East is a turbulent region, filled with groups vying for various degrees of independence or autonomy from their Mediterranean masters. It is also, of course, filled with bursting with oil, vital for the continuation of our glorious conquest, now that we have a broader or border with Italian possessions or Italian possessions. We should move a number of divisions into the area to conduct open exercises, aggressive aerial patrols, and general displays of force. When the time comes to move on to the Levant, the Italians will be so terrified and demoralized that their resistance will crumble like the ruins they inhabit. And our foothold on Asia. With the land secured and the most rebellious occupants dealt with, we can formally welcome Melta of the Balton Klein Alzheim to the greater German Reich. This land of coastlines and mountains will be a springboard for projecting German power into the entirety of West Africa, Asia, thanks to our infrastructural improvements and the vast amount of natural resources it provides. The barbarians who infest Klein Alzheim continue to be a minor problem, but their time will come soon enough. We now possess one of the most defensible geopolitical regions in the world, and the Turkish threat to the Balkans is ended forevermore. Regardless of what the future might hold for the Reich, we have finally achieved a great victory for our civilization. But we're going to end it there, because right now we've finally beaten the Russians, we've beaten uh, the Turks. And now the next step after this is to beat up who? Oh, Italy eventually, as well as Fall Blau and France and the Peninsula. So we're moving all around here, having a good old time. I might take out Italy first because once you take out Italy, it'll be easier to take out Spain. So, but regardless, if you enjoyed the episode, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Our economy is shrinking again. God dang it! And I'll see you tomorrow in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.